Uh, John Nelson's up next. Uh, John makes maps and works on software user experience. He is awkward in social situations, particularly conferences where he actually gets to see people he generally only reads about. Um, he's he's left-handed, works in a shed, stands up at his desk, enjoys bursting into song. Maybe we'll hear that later. Uh, likes the color blue and is terrible with names. He also has a constant inner narration and tends to ramble. John, take it away. Thank you. I've got eight minutes, all right? So if I hit eight minutes, I want you all to like, give me a bunch of these, all right? Yeah, uh, uh, thank you. Intricate wooden maps. Hello, is this better? Intricate, now I can whisper. Intricate wooden maps. How many of you have seen these things up at seaside or lakeside gift shops? I live in Michigan, so it's, it's uh, standard wares in every gift shop, just about, because there's a lake in every town. Uh, the one on the left happens to be my father's. He lives in Mackinac City, Michigan, and he just prizes this thing. And I love it a lot, too. I, I, I just stand there, and I find myself drawn to it because it's a tactile map. And maps are amazing, and tactile maps are pretty amazing, too. So I saw this one, which happened to be made of hexagonal wood layers stacked on top of each other representing bathymetry. So naturally, I bought it, and I was able to make a scan of it and share it here with you. Here's the whole thing. And it's actually just fake. I lied. So how many of you actually fell for that, that that was actually a real, come on, get those hands up there. Yeah, so realistic. It was amazing, John. OK, so how did I make this? And why did I make this? Well, let's start with how. So I got a layer from the living atlas of the world called uh, bathymetry. You could also use natural earth's amazing bathymetry layers. And these are vector layers. And atop these vector layers, I draped a hexagonal mesh, a tessellation, generate tessellation. Why hexagons? Because hexagons rule. Nature loves the hexagon, and so do I. Why fight it? I'm part of nature. The hexagon is where it's at. So I uh, did a sampling of all these. Uh, the center point of each hexagon, sampling the actual polygon that it was atop, and I got this. And then I ran a dissolve function, dissolving all layers of equal depth into this. And now we're getting something kind of, you can see where we're headed here, right? Uh, and these are just colors, right? You see these sorts of colors for bathymetry all the time. And they're beautiful, but uh, they aren't wood, right? They aren't fake wood, and they could be. So instead of just a solid fill color for each of these depths, I used a a uh, photograph of some birch. And uh, on top of that fill, I have a stroke with a slight indentation to kind of mimic that slight reflectivity along the edge of a tactile surface. And underneath that fill, I used a gradient line to kind of replicate this uh, dissipating shade cast by a three-dimensional layer of wood. And it ended up uh, with just the fill looking like this. Mm, you know, I can't really tell what's going on here. Each level I rotated the wood slightly so it gave it a little bit of uh, depth and variability. And then here's what it looks like with that slight faint inner white stroke. Eh, you know, it's okay, we're getting there. But the real magic happens when you actually add that layer of depth. And this really pushes the sense of verticality here. So I'm starting with the deeper parts of the ocean and I'm bringing it up in this little animation here. And now we're talking, right? Now we're getting something that looks kind of like those little laminar or wooden maps that you see in all those gift shops, or at least the ones that I see in all the gift shops. But it could be better because there's, uh, in real life, you get less incidental light as you get in deeper, right? These areas are kind of two inches deeper than you know, the ones on the very front, so they get less light and they're a little bit darker. So I can take that layer and instead of painting it as wood, just do a semi-transparent overlay that gets slightly more opaque at depth. And it looks like this. And I noticed that uh, these wooden maps uh, have these really kind of neat, very fine uh, wood burnt or laser burnt labels in them. And the cool thing about these wood burnt labels is they're this, this semi-transparent deep wooden ochre with kind of edges that dissolve away from the scorching effect, you know, traveling up the grains of the wood. And so uh, the labeling engine, I just gave it a semi-transparent brown woodish color, 
and I gave it a, a glow of uh, even more semi-transparent woodish color. And the result is reasonably convincing. And you can play with slight offsets of, of white to give it a slight embossed effect as though it were really kind of branded into these layers of wood. Here's what it looks like uh, for the whole map. But these things are never sold as is. They're always wrapped in a wooden frame because that's what keeps it all together and you know, hides all the glue spill out along the edges. And so here's a, a wooden frame that I made for my fake wooden map, which is real but also fake, but realistically fake. Here's that interesting part of the ocean in the, uh, in the, uh, the Pacific area with the Challenger Deep. Um, but wooden maps can get a little bit boring, so why not span a cord representing undersea cables that traffic the internet all over the world, right? So this is a photograph of a little paracord that I've used as a line fill, or a line symbol that repeats and flows along the line nice and easy. And little push pins kind of tacking them into place along my hexagonal elevation wooden map. Here's a little legend up in the corner where I've pinned those little bits of, of twine representing the amount of internet that's squeezed through those pipes. And there it is. Here's an interesting look at the transatlantic cables, which are amazing things in and of themselves. So I'm a cartographer, but my 10-year-old daughter is also a cartographer, and this is some of Willow's work. And Willow saw that wooden map. Oh, somebody clapped for Willow, which I really appreciate. I'm going to tell her she got a, a round of applause from professional cartographers. She'll love to hear that. So this is Willow's map, but she saw the wooden map that I was making, and she was like, hey, you know, that's nice, Dad. Good job. She's, I could tell she was being supportive. <laughs> and I said, well, what, what would you do to make it different? And she said, well, uh, I really like the movie Trolls, and if you guys have kids in the age range of 10, you, you may have seen Trolls a couple dozen times like I have, and the whole world is this kind of tactile felt environment with stitching and kind of this the soft edge. And uh, she said, well, I would make a felt bathymetry map. And I said, I think we can do this, Willow, but first give me a hug, right? <laughs> she wants to make maps with Dad. That's amazing. So uh, we took out a swatch of felt that she had and took a picture of it and then made uh, slightly differentially colorized versions of that felt. Uh, and then we painted those in as layers instead of wood. And instead of the little inner semi-transparent white edge to represent uh, you know, offset light along the edge of a piece of wood. We just used uh, a, dashed, a dashed line effect with a secondary dashed line effect to represent the little pucker that happens where the needle and thread go into the, fet, into the felt. There's a little bit of a closer look. I don't know if you can see it from here. And there's the whole felt world. Willow's map. way under budget. We're was, made of time now. No, that was pretty good. Nice work. Um, does anyone have questions for John? Felt maps of your own you want to make? Yes. Hold on. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. So, yeah, I was curious to know what sort of wood you used for the frame of yeah, the yeah, fake Yeah, thanks, Benny. Map. Hey, yeah. great, great work earlier today, by the way. Uh, the, the frame is a little uh, photograph of a piece of wood that I just kind of clipped and then duplicated along the edge of the, of the layout. But uh, I'll find, so uh, this is practical cartography day, right? But you just spent five minutes very impractically. <laughs> I realize that. However, uh, maps like this, which replicate tactile surfaces, are really engaging to, well, I mean, they're engaging to me. But I think they're engaging to other human beings because it's something that you kind of want to reach out and touch and it's less abstract and it looks real. And it's real enough where my 10-year-old daughter would see it and start thinking up ideas for maps that she could make. And so uh, tactile maps like this, which are fun little hacks, actually have a pretty practical use in the world of education and, and by way of engaging folks to get involved in map making and think about map making and just enjoy the art of map making. I would totally agree. Does anyone have any other questions? Any more brain busters? Going once. All right. Thanks, John. Thank you.